Welcome to live stream Bible school and thank God it is Thursday. <laughs> Almost I was going to say Friday. Thursday. Sorry we're a little bit it late. It's like Friday. We're a little bit late today. We're in Front Royal, Virginia <laughs> and we still got some front some uh, And the troops are out today. They are here. Yeah. Yeah, and really this we just finished our meeting here last night. And wow, we had a wonderful time really? last night. It was amazing. We danced and we danced yeah. and we danced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for those tough stains, you got to shout them out. Shout them out. So we were shouting and dancing and praising the Lord. Mm -hmm. We were praising <laughs> the Lord. We have a lot to praise God for, you know? Yeah. All right, I got a new joke for today. Praise I got the this Lord. from That's Minister. That's something good to thank God for. <laughs> Yeah, thank God for we joy. We need a new one. You're, you're better looking when you're happy. <laughs> right? So uh, let's see. Uh, this came from Minister. Did you hear about, oh, no, what did the snail say on the back of a turtle? All right, y'all got this. You have to get the picture. What did the snail say that was on the back of a turtle? He says, "Wee." <laughs> <laughs> Minister, he loves that joke. He just like, man, that's the funniest thing I did ever heard. Did that other one about the, the left arm? And the uh oh, did you hear about the guy that lost his left arm and his left leg? He's all right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's, that's funny if you work with it a little bit. So. <laughs> He's all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was thinking of some real funny until we were having lunch yesterday, and we just had the best time. We should have written them down. I, I know. I forget them unless the situation comes up yeah. and I'm thinking about it. But uh, <laughs> did you hear about... <laughs> no, I can't think about <laughs> Did you hear about the butcher? <laughs> Took his wife to the party for a very first time, and he's introducing her around, and he said, Meet Patty. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty. That's one of my favorite jokes. Actually, that's one of on that that's one. one of Kenneth Copeland's favorite jokes. Yeah. He actually called me, thanked me for the joke, and, and laughed. He said he'd been laughing for days, him and Gloria. And then about two or three weeks ago, he texted me again and said, "I'm still laughing about that joke." <laughs> <laughs> me, Patty. <laughs> It's even funnier because we went to Southwest Believers Convention. He saw us there, and so he tried to tell one of my jokes. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. So I just gave him a courtesy laugh. I didn't correct him. In I front don't of even everybody. try to tell your jokes. I yeah. just tell you to tell the joke. Yeah, but right? what it, you have a pretty good joke. I have one joke. She has one joke. <laughs> Do you know the difference between a Cajun zoo and a normal zoo, a regular zoo? How many know the difference? No? Let me tell you, okay? When you go to the zoo, a normal, regular zoo, you're going to find displays of animals in cages. And on the display is the name, it's a sign with the name of the animal, where it's from, its habitat, what it likes to eat, so forth, right? Yes. Well, in a Cajun zoo, you walk up to the cage, you see the animal, and then you look on the cage, and there's a name of that animal, and the recipe it goes in. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend, and she, she used to zoo. sell, sell uh, windows and doors and stuff like that, roofs, whatever. How to eat possum. Yeah. She would go, oh, my goodness, she had some stories to tell in Louisiana, you know. And this one woman, she had something cooking on the stove. Oh. Mm. So uh, Patty said, well, what you got cooking today? <laughs> and sure enough, it was possum. <laughs> oh, possum. And she seed. didn't kill it either. <laughs> I guess she found it. <laughs> Road, roadkill. Wow. If you put a lot of, lot of hot sauce in there, that's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we're staying at a cabin, Pastor Carlton's yeah. prayer cabin so in the woods. Pretty. And so we put corn out, and so we have... Uh, oh, they put uh, corn out, yeah. I was in charge oh, of telling in charge. someone to put corn out. I did not buy the corn. 
do you want the details? So I told them exactly where to put the corn, so I should get some credit for that. You do. Anyway, we put corn out. <laughs> Pastor Carlton put some out. They ate all of it. But anyway, so as a turkey comes out there, a fox, a raccoon, squirrels everywhere, and um, uh, um, yesterday was three bucks, mm -hmm. eight point, six point, four point bucks. All at one time. And they then this morning there. was a doe with two, two little, little baby oh. spotted fawns. That's really why we're late, because I stopped to talk to him a while. She, he did. I was talking to him, and, and Trent said, well, you don't have to go to Bible school. I said, this is God's creation. So I'm talking to the doe. I'm saying, how are you doing today? And you could tell that she understood me. And the little fawns were there. And then I told him, right over there, there's some corn for you that we have prepared for you to come over and eat some corn. And you grow up to be big and strong and fat. So I can kill and that. so <laughs> Pastor Carl's going to shoot you in the backyard. <laughs> Not me, of course. Uh, all right. <laughs> hey, Mark, are we still talking about the spirit of faith? Today? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. You know, I've been thinking about it. This, this week morning. and also tomorrow, we had one of our broadcasts from here that was so had some good. technical difficulties yeah. because one of the people here, I think, was standing on the cord. So it cut off the circulation, so our picture was coming in and out. I don't think that's what happened. Oh, my, I was just wondering. <laughs> so, so get off the cord, would you? So, so one of the days it kind of messed up. We got it all video recorded, so we're going to play that tomorrow, the whole thing, and it was a really good time. Well, we've had a great time. So a great day. week mm -hmm. on the Spirit of Faith in the mm -hmm. morning, and our spiritual father, one of our spiritual fathers, was Dad Hagen, Kenneth E. Hagen. And he said, the Lord told him, go and teach my people faith. So when he had meetings, he would usually teach on faith in the morning. And then in the evenings would be more uh, Holy Ghost meetings. So last night, we just kind of had a great time uh, rejoicing, praising, uh, different singing. people singing. Mm -hmm. And you were singing. The minister was singing. The minister was singing till he was like sweating. He you was know, shining with he was glory. Like sweating. He's, he's sweating. He's like sweating, and he's like singing and jumping, well, swinging. That's, we all got swinging with the out Holy over Spirit. hell, spitting in the devil's eyes, yeah. swinging his handkerchief around, and he was jumping. He even had like this ninety-year-old man over here jumping and running. Uh, ninety. <laughs> no, he's an evangelist. There was a pastor here last night. I don't think he's here. No, now. he actually was not ninety. But he old. got healed. He got healed. He'd had a uh, knee surgery. Yeah, and had a pin. He had pins and all kinds of needles. Yeah. And pins and plates and everything. Plates. And he was healed. Had a picnic. And, and before that night, he could not jump and run. But he ran, and last night he danced all over the place. Danced on the platform. He ran for the first Praise time. God, he got healed. He ran so much, he started to bother me, scare me. I'm like... He <laughs> lost his balance once, but uh, um, you know he made it around he the corner. Yeah. Some of those corners, you know, kind of rough. You got to turn that corner. And so I tell him, don't. We need to put like a speed limit sign up for the corner, <laughs> going around the corner. Then we had to put one way to run that away. And so he's like seventy something years old. I told him he don't look a day over sixty nine. That's right. But I mean, he's <laughs> 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 I'm so entertaining myself today. So so he took off running, and he ran again, and everybody's running with him. I, I even ran with him. You did. You yeah, the only off. thing that was not running was my nose. <laughs> my nose was not running. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? Isn't it great during a pandemic to go to church? Yeah. You know? I didn't even know what a pandemic was. I didn't either. I thought that's a new vocabulary. Word. I thought a pandemic was a woman had too many pans in the kitchen. <laughs> I thought, man, that's a pandemic in here. There's pandemic. pans everywhere. So <laughs> it's something that's going on around the whole wide world. Well, I tell you what, there's a revival going on around the whole wide world. Jesus is moving, and the Holy Ghost is being poured out in every nation. Praise God. And I say that the church, you know, they might say, you can't have church. Our friends in Nevada that have not been able to have church for how many months since March? Yeah, you can tell they're kind of backslidden, kind of drooping. <laughs> Pastor David Sharon, David he's probably Sharon. watching. David and Vicki. 
They're about ready to break the law. And, They're just going to uh, have church. Step on out there and have church. They've tried everything, and the governor yeah. still says they can't have church. California, they said you can't even sing in church. But no singing. We, we you know, talked to Maybe them. they heard some of y'all sing, and they were yeah, like, they please stop that. that. But uh, <laughs> no, no, they're saying you can't sing, can't praise, worship in church. Yeah, but I just talked to uh, Jill Cogsall, and she said they're having church good, yeah. having it strong. Yeah. I'll tell you what, we're just not going to. No. We're gonna obey God. That's right. We got bail money. I mean, we got money. We can get you out. <laughs> yeah, we got bail money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll get you out, and then you can relate to Paul and Silas. Yeah. <laughs> Except you didn't get a beat, but you might get a beat. But we're gonna have church anyway. We're gonna be bold and strong. We will actually praise. be there in a few weeks in yep. Las Vegas at Pastor David Sharon's mm -hmm. church, and uh, we're gonna have a Holy Ghost, devil stomping. Woo! Jesus is Lord, Amen. Holy Ghost Church service. I think we should all pull together right now and say, Jesus is Lord in Las Vegas, yes. and in Nevada, and yeah. in that church. Yeah. Word of life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Plead Amen. the blood of Jesus great over freedom Las Vegas and over Nevada. People can go to casinos, 50%, mm -hmm. fill up a casino 50%. Then why in the world can't you go to a church? Right. Huh? Crazy. So we're going to have church. Right? Amen. We're going to have church anyway. Amen. So let's get into the word. You ready? I am so ready. You want to give us any more updates? No, I'm good. All right. Was, Jesus is <laughs> Lord right now. That's a good update. All right. We're glad to see you today. So uh, open your Bible to 2 Corinthians 4.13. Our Bible study today is on the spirit of faith. So all week it's been our free gift to you. And we've reordered the books, and this book's called The Spirit of Faith. You can go to markhankins.org and say, I want the free book. It's our gift to you, and it's a gift from all of the friends and partners of the ministry that are partners with the ministry. And so we are giving it to you. We uh, are thankful for the board members of Mark Hankins Ministries. Yep. And uh, the board members are Pastor David Vicki Sharon mm -hmm. and uh, Ann Adcox, mm -hmm. and Jim Wanda Quillen, and also... Mike and Ann and Hoover, because they, they didn't have we their call name. We the Happy Hoovers. Yeah, yeah, and so uh, we love them, and so all of the partners are actually giving you the word free, mm -hmm. right? So here's a free book, so go to the website, or, or you just call the number on the screen. People in our office will send it right to you on the Spirit of Faith. Amen. <coughs> Amen. You ready? I am so ready. All right, ready. 2 Corinthians four thirteen. here's what the Apostle Paul says. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. Mm -hmm. He said, we also believe and therefore speak. So he said, the spirit of faith, that's what Paul said, that's what we have. Mm -hmm. So if you ask Paul, what is it that you have that keeps you from collapsing when you're going through adversity? And no man went through more adversity other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself than the apostle Paul. How many times he was shipwrecked, beaten with 39 stripes, five times if you study the process of how he was beaten that most men die with just one beating. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> 39 stripes, five times, beaten with rods three times. <clears throat> and so he had some tremendous adversity. But he had a spirit of faith. That's what kept him from collapsing. And therefore kept him from he quitting. believed, but he not only believed, he yeah. spoke. I believe and but. I Speak. speak. So the spirit of faith has two <clears throat> main ingredients. Mm -hmm. Number one, I'm a believer. I believe God. I believe the word of God. I believe the power of the blood Amen. of Jesus. Uh, I believe in the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I believe God. So you could say that believing is the attitude of right. faith. I'm a believer. Mm -hmm. And then he said, and I speak. So speaking is the initial act of faith, which simply means if your faith doesn't move your mouth, then it'll never move a mountain. Mm -hmm. So the initial act of faith is the speaking part of faith. So go over to Romans chapter 10 real quickly, and we're going to look at this some today on the speaking part of faith. We'll see in Romans chapter 10. Actually, you'll see the same thing from the Lord Jesus in Mark eleven twenty three, yes. where Jesus said to have faith in God. And then in verse 23, Jesus said, here's how faith works, mm -hmm. that whosoever shall say 
unto this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he saith. Mm -hmm. So he mentions the saying or speaking part three times and the believing part only once. So it's like a <clears throat> formula almost. It has to be steps, exact, exact steps, steps of faith. Yeah, so he, you have to do three times more teaching on the saying mm -hmm. or the speaking part of faith than just on the believing part. Right. And so a lot of times we quote Mark 9, 23, if you can believe all things are possible mm -hmm. to him that believes. Right. But it's not enough just to believe. You also have to believe with your words. Right. Because your words can either complete your faith, release your faith, or can r literally defeat your faith. Right. Your words. And so he said, your words, you have what you say. Right. So we came up with our new gang sign for me and minister and <laughs> Pastor Carlton. And uh, Pastor Carlton. And uh, we got a new it? gang sign. And we had a picture of Dad Hagen holding three and one. And that's a picture of him. So we did our gang sign like this. People say, "What?" Well, then you got to get get to what do you call that? You got to get that mug look on your face. Um, <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> you know, mug. That's kind of ug. That's kinda ugly. Of, that ain't just a mug. That's a little bit of ug. So <clears throat> you got three and one. This is my. And mug so, thing. Uh, you, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know that's that's pretty. So. <clears throat> So three and one, we got a picture of Dad Hagen saying, right. Mark eleven twenty three, the mm -hmm. speaking, saying part three times and the believing part only once. And so he said, your words, the emphasis upon your words, that you will have what you say, which the Lord said to me, and if you are silent, you could lose by default. Right. So that means you've got to get your mouth moving. Or your believer must be connected to your speaker, your voice. Actually, the authority is in your voice. Now, do you remember when Dad Hagen had that vision, his book, I Believe in Visions, and we were at Rhema uh, Friday night preaching there, and mm -hmm. Pastor Hagen uh, there and the Rhema family and had a great time. Wonderful. And so we asked uh, Pastor Hagen to come up. Mm -hmm. and tell a little bit about that vision. And it goes simply like this. Dad Hagen was having a vision where Jesus was talking to him. And while Jesus was talking to him about his life and, and, and things that are very important, he said uh, uh, a demon spirit, kind of monkey-like, jumped between him and Jesus. And that demon was going yakety-yak, so Dad Hagen couldn't hear what Jesus was telling him. Mm -hmm. And then that demon, he said, I put out some sort of a cloud or a smoke or something. Mm -hmm. And he said, so he got to where he couldn't see Jesus and couldn't understand what Jesus was saying. So <clears throat> he said, Jesus just kept on talking. And um, finally, uh, Dad Hagen said, finally, I said, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit, I command you to shut up and get out of here. And that little demon fell to the ground and ran off. And then he's still talking to Jesus, and he said, Lord, he said, I kept waiting on you to do something about that demon. Right. And he said, and the Lord said to him, no, he said, I gave you the authority. Right. And he said, you can see that in res you're resisting the devil in Ephesians. See that in 1 Peter. You can see that in Matthew. And so he said this, I delegated my authority on the earth to the church. So Jesus said to Dad Hagen, he said, if you hadn't have done something about that demon, I couldn't have. So he said, no, no, Lord, I know I must have misunderstood you. You mean to say you wouldn't have? Mm -hmm. He said, no. I said, if you hadn't have done something about that demon, I couldn't have. Mm -hmm. He said, now, Lord, you're going to have to show me that in the scriptures. And so the Lord began to show him. Actually, he said three and showed him four passages of scripture where you resist the devil and he will run from you. Amen. And so he said, I That's delegated right. that right. authority in the earth to you as a believer and to the church. So if you don't resist the devil, I can't resist him for you. Right. That's why people sometimes... They're kind of waiting on God to do waiting something. Waiting on God. Yeah, I'm going to be healed one day or I'm going to have victory one day. Yeah. One day. It never comes because they never unlock the door with their believing and, and their speaking. speaking. So the Take authority, the authority themselves. that you have as a believer. So the Lord said this to me. He said, uh, the authority of the believer is not just available. It is necessary. Amen. Amen. 
Uh, because sometimes when you understand Mark 11, 23, you're fascinated by the potential and the possibility that whosoever shall have whatsoever he says. And you're like, wow, look at all the things that, that your faith will work on, on whosoever, whatsoever. And so then he said, no, it's not just some available thing. It is absolutely necessary for a believer to exercise their authority. Are to resist the devil because if you don't do something about it, then Jesus will not. That's right. He's already done everything he's going to That's do right. about it. And so now he delegated that authority to the church. So it's a very sobering thought to realize that however Satan may be attacking you in your mind or your body, your finances, you will have to resist him or you will have to exercise your authority in the name of Jesus through the power of the blood of Jesus. And he doesn't just run from Jesus. He runs from you. you. We are his body. Demons been, are afraid of you. We've been deputized. So it's, if you wonder about that uh, story in its entirety, just order Dad Hagen's book mm -hmm. called I Believe in Vision. And he tells that whole story exactly how it happened mm -hmm. and explains what the Lord said to him. So that means that the authority that a believer has, that Jesus said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, all the power of the enemy, nothing shall by any means hurt you. In other words, I've delegated that authority to you in my name. In my name, you will cast out devils, or you will exercise authority mm -hmm. over devils. And so the authority of the believer, I believe and I speak. And three times he mentions the saying part, one time the believing part. That's right. So you can't just believe in your heart. You can't just uh uh, 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 assent to that the word is true, you have to put that word in your mouth. That's right. That you have what you That's say. Action. Yeah, mm -hmm. so Dad Hagen said, if you're not happy with what you have in life, check out what you've been saying. Mm -hmm. Even in the area of your finances, because whosoever will have whatsoever means it affects every area of your life. Spirit of faith it works the same in every area of your life. So the Lord said to me, I'm just 17 years old, and I'm listening to Dad Hagen teach. And Dad Hagen said, never talk lack. In other words, never talk poor. Don't talk lack. He said, the Lord told him, if you talk lack, it will actually defeat your own faith. He said, it'll actually keep money from coming to you. Mm -hmm. So he said, the Lord told him to say, don't talk lack, but say, the money will come. The money will come. The money will come. And so uh, when you're facing a challenge, you guys are tithers and givers and y'all are givers. And so when you face a financial challenge, you've already given, you've already sown your seed. And now the money will come. The money will come. Wow. And so he said, when you say that, it actually activates your faith. And I believe it even puts angels to work for you. Amen. Amen. The money will come. The money will come. The money will come. Whatever you're believing for in here, you say, the money will come. The money will come. The money will come. The money will come. And he said to consistently say that. And then he said, actually use the 23rd Psalm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of times as a pastor, a lot of people never use the 23rd Psalm until their funeral. <laughs> you know, because when you go to the funeral, always they'll say, be sure and say 23rd Psalm. So it's the 23rd Psalm at the gravesite. All right, 23rd Psalm. Lord I say is it every shepherd. day. No, don't the Lord wait. is my shepherd. Don't wait till you're I dead. Just one right now. <laughs> don't wait till the funeral right, right now. Say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall, shall not, not want. want. That should be your confession of faith every day. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Want. So instead of talking about everything the devil's doing, talk about the promises of God and what Jesus is doing. Amen. The Lord is my the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And then we learned this from him. He yeah. said, I shall not lack. And then he said to say, I do not lack for strength. I do not lack for ability. Mm -hmm. I do not lack for opportunity. opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I never lack, lack for, for money. money. He said, I say that twice. I, I never, never lack, lack for, for money. money. <laughs> so you have what you say. And you know what? It's the truth. So you don't have to make it up. Yeah. If the word of God says it, it's true already. So it's not like you're saying it and saying it to make it true. Yeah. You're just saying it. You're like signing the check. Yeah. The word is true. That, that belongs to me. I believe Amen. It. I'm so I believe and I speak. The authority of the believer is not just available. It is necessary. So again, the Lord said it to me this way. He said, if you knew what was on the other side of your mountain, you, you would, would move, move it. it. Yeah. 
<laughs> in other words, the mountain, if God would have put the mountain there, he wouldn't tell you to move it. So apparently the mountain represents some sort of a, a hindrance that the enemy throws in your way. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, if you knew what was on the other side, in other words, Satan's trying to block you and you're receiving from God or doing the will of God. He said, if you knew what was on the other side, you would command that mountain to be removed. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we see a mountain, something that looks like an impossibility. Right. It's permanent. It's never going to change. And then we just stop on that side of the mountain. But if you use your authority... There's something on the other side of that mountain that the enemy's trying to block you from. And so you have to exercise your authority as a believer, and that authority is exercised in your words. Yeah. In your words. And the spirit of faith, listen close. The spirit of faith, Paul is quoting from the psalmist David. And so no doubt if you read Hebrews 11, every one of those people had a spirit of faith. That's the one thing they had. They're not always the most talented, not always the people with no flaws, but they had one thing, by faith. Yes. They had faith in God. Mm -hmm. And it's their faith that enabled them to do the plan of God and be a blessing. Right. And so without faith, it is... Impossible. It's not, it's not unlikely. Impossible. You don't have one chance in a million. I mean, you have no chance. Hebrews 11, 6. Amen. It's so impossible. If the, so if the enemy can move you from a place of faith, he can get you outside of the plan of God for your life. Right. So without faith and possible, please God, he that comes to God must believe. That he is. And that he is a, a rewarder of, of those who diligently, diligently seek, seek him. him. So God literally is a faith God, or he demands faith of us. And where are you going to get faith? Well, Romans 10, 17, right? So then faith, faith cometh comes by, by hearing, hearing and hearing, hearing by, by the, the word, word of God. God. Wow. All right. So jump over to Romans chapter 10, and we're talking about the spirit of faith. I'm and so glad you finally made it to Romans 10. Well, you know, you I've been thinking about this verse this morning. Oh, really? While I was out walking, I was going, hmm, that yeah. thou shalt confess with thy mouth. And I yeah. was thinking about the activity of, of your faith, you know. Mm. Confessing with your mouth and believing with your heart. Yeah. How vital that is, and it goes together. Yeah. Woo. To bring us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Yeah. And that if you believe that, um, that uh, God raised Jesus from the dead, he couldn't have raised Jesus from the dead without Jesus being declared righteous. But, but um, excuse me, without us being declared righteous. Romans 4.25. Romans 4.25. I was meditating on that. I thought, wow. So Romans 4.25, and really Romans is on the righteousness, the free gift yeah. of grace and righteousness given to us through what Christ has done. So Romans 4.25 kind of breaks it down yeah. where it says he was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised for our justification. All right, we'll go over that one more time. He was delivered up, which means he died or went to the cross because of our sin, yeah. and he was raised for our justification. When we were declared righteous. So other translations yep. break it down a little bit different, that he went to the cross because of our sins, and he was raised when we were declared righteous. Wow. So Jesus was not raised from the dead until the penalty for sin was paid in Amen. full, and we were declared not guilty or justified. And as soon as we were declared righteous, then God raised Christ from the dead. <laughs> All right, so look at so Romans. when you say that, I believe in my heart. So believing is of the heart mm -hmm. that God raised Jesus from the dead. Yeah. Then you are granted righteousness. I mean, you're, you're um, acknowledging mm -hmm. I am the righteousness of So God. Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Mm. Thou shalt be saved. And the word saved, of course, there doesn't just mean one day I'm going to go to heaven. Mm -mm. Certainly includes that, but it doesn't just mean, wow, when I die, you know, I'm going to go to heaven. The word saved means deliverance, safety, healing, preservation, yes. soundness. So Romans 10, 9 is not just Paul's altar call scripture. Right. 
In other words, Paul wasn't like writing the book of Romans. He went, well, we sure need an altar call scripture. So when people are in church and when they come to the altar. No, no, he's talking about this is how your salvation, deliverance, safety, how it works is you simply confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus that he is Lord. Yes. Confess whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you don't really have to do 38 things to get saved. Just that one thing. Believe in your heart. Romans 10, 9. Say so, it. So God's Say not, it. God's not going to give you something from Einstein. you got to break the formula down. No, God just said, he said, in the face of every situation, not just your initial confession when you made Jesus your Lord or when you say, I received Jesus and I'm saved, but it is really your continual victory declaration Amen. that Jesus is my Lord. Mm -hmm. And that means I believe in my heart God raised him from the dead. And that means that sin cannot dominate me. Guilt cannot dominate me. Shame cannot dominate me. Sickness cannot dominate me. The devil can't dominate me because Jesus is my Lord. Jesus set me free and Jesus redeemed me. He purchased my freedom with his blood. So that simple confession uh, is a daily confession right. that Dad Hagen said, if you want to be strong in faith, you confess the Lordship of Jesus constantly. Jesus is Lord. Yeah, right in the face when Amen. the enemy may be attacking your mind or your feelings, you say, Jesus, Jesus is my is Lord. Lord. Jesus is my Savior. And yeah. he said, you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead. Why? Because he says, for with the heart you believe unto righteous, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. And so this is what you and I would call um, a positive confession or the confession of your faith. And really, even among theologians and among world religions, Christianity is called the great confession. What is that great confession? That Jesus, Jesus Christ is, is Lord. Lord. Amen. That you confess Jesus is Lord. He is master. He is God manifest in the flesh. Right. He is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Jesus entered death to destroy him that had the power of death and to spoil him. And Jesus came out the champion. He is Lord. He is master. That means that <laughs> Satan's dominion has been broken. Satan is a defeated foe. Jesus is victorious. And everything Jesus did, he did it for you and set to the credit of your account. So when you confess Jesus is Lord, you're saying, I've been delivered from the power of darkness. I've been translated into the kingdom of the Son of God. I am saved, Hallelujah. not just when I die, but I'm saved, delivered, healed, healed. blessed. Come on, all. Everything's the, in salvation. Yeah, it's all in the same package. Yes. But that confession is essential. It is. It is necessary. It is the key that unlocks the door. That right confession, there. believe mm -hmm. in your heart. Let your heart agree with it. It's all Dad Hagen would say. Let your heart agree with it and confess with your mouth, Jesus is my Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay? So here's what he says, Romans 10. I was going to read this, and, and so some of you got 9 and 10, but look at verse 8. Uh, let's go and That's look good. up at verse 6. I'll read this because Romans 10, 6 says, For the righteousness which is of faith speaketh our talks this way. You could just say, righteousness of faith speaks. It's good. That means if you're silent, you're not going to enjoy this. Amen. So the righteousness of the faith speaks this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend to heaven to bring Christ down? Or verse 7, who shall descend into the deep to bring Christ up again from the dead? Look at verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. It is the word of faith that we preach. It's amazing how many times it talks about speaking yeah. and saying. Yeah. It's such a vital part. Yeah. Wow. He said the word, in other words, he says, you don't have to bring Jesus down. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to raise him up. He's already been raised up. Right. He's already ascended, seated at the right hand of God, triumphant, victorious. You don't have to bring him down because he's really already done everything he's going to do about your salvation. Amen. When he sat down, he said, but you do need to do something. That's right. Can I say something? 
And a lot of times people, they'll pray for revival. They say, Lord, we want you to come down. We need you to come down. Jesus said, I ain't coming down. I've already been down there. <laughs> Died on the cross, been raised from the dead, and I ain't coming down. And when I do come down, it'll all be over. In other words, he said, I ain't coming down just so you can have revival. In other words, he said, your revival is in your mouth. That's where your revival is. <laughs> that's, that's how people get saved. It's through the, that's what he's talking about. He Romans said, your 10. healing is in your mouth. Through the message Your of, deliverance yes. is in your mouth. Yes. Right? So he says, you confess with your mouth. They call that the word of faith. So what Paul preached, he called the word of faith. Yeah. And you have uh, sometimes yeah. preachers and denominations, you know, they, they're always attacking the word of faith. They say, oh, that word of faith. Well, you're attacking the apostle Paul there, <laughs> if you ever thought about that. So if you preach the word of faith, you're in pretty good company. Because Paul called what he preached the word of faith. Amen. Right? So you confess Jesus is Lord. Again, this is not just the initial or first confession. This is a continual confession of Jesus' lordship in your life and Amen. everything it has produced. Amen. Because we continually believe. We adhere to the gospel message, and that's where the power is. Yeah, so and go, we adhere with to, our voice and our praise. Go to I Hebrews 4.14 real Amen. quickly. Hebrews and 4. you'll see really what's going on here in Hebrews chapter 4 because the significance and the value and the importance of this, is, it just cannot be underestimated. The significance and the power, the importance of your confession of faith in Hebrews 4.14. Can you find that, Hebrews 4.14? I read it in the King James Version, but it's also good in the Amplified Bible. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession in the King James, but it's really the same identical word profession that is used in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Same identical word. So they could have just said confession. Mm -hmm. So the Amplified Bible says, let us hold fast our confession of faith in him. Aha, uh -huh. so this is different because most people grow up with religion or even Christianity and they think about confession. They always think about confessing your sin. I mean, they say, you're going to go to confession, you know, one yeah. whole denomination. That means you're going to just go confess all your sin. Right. But there's more in the New Testament about your confession of faith than there is about your confession of failure. Amen. You're believing in your heart and saying it with And so he heart. says, hold fast, mm -hmm. don't turn loose of it. Understand the significance and the importance of your continued confession of faith. Amen. Don't turn loose of it. Hold on tight. That means there, that it can be and will be challenged. Right. Dad Hagen said, even if failure is walking in front of you and defeats all around you, he said, you hold fast to your confession of faith, which means you can't be silent. And the word confession means to say the same thing mm -hmm. or to agree with. So sometimes when it comes to confession, people say, you know, well, you're, you're lying. You're not telling the truth. Well, not if I'm agreeing with God because God can't lie. <laughs> and so you're bringing your confession into agreement to say the same thing or to agree with the word of God. And he says, hold on tight to that confession of faith. So the Word of God is truth. Yes. And everything that we feel, taste, touch, we sense, that's with our senses, may not be the truth. Yeah. So you can line up your word, your situation, your life to the Word of God, which is yeah. truth. It, can, it will supersede it is true. and change Let everything God be else. true. In every, in every other situation in life. In right. other words, you're going to agree with God, and you're not just going to agree with him with your words. You're going to keep doing that. Hold on tight. So someone said, beware of the dangers of a dual confession. Yeah. That means That's people say true. one thing at church, then they say something else the rest of the week. And so hold fast to your confession. Keep saying the same thing. All right, hold on tight hold to that. Hold on tight. Don't turn loose of that. That's right. All right, that is very significant in your victory. Is he says, hold tight to your confession of faith. So that confession includes that Jesus is Lord. Yeah. 
but it also includes everything the blood of Jesus has done for us, faith in his blood, and includes everything Jesus is doing for us now, includes everything the word of God does in us and through us, and it includes everything the indwelling Holy Spirit does Amen. in us. So your confession is a large area. What is your confession? So instead of asking people how they're feeling, you say, what is your confession? You know, we we kind of like, you know, we all say, how you feeling? I don't know about y'all here in Virginia, but like in Louisiana or Texas, when you see somebody say, how you feeling? How you feeling? How you feeling? <laughs> well, you're just opening the door for them to get out of faith. So instead of asking them how they're feeling, especially faith people, you or understand. Or if they tell you something good, okay, I'm fine. Oh, but how you really feeling? No, tell me how you <laughs> be honest with me. <laughs> so you're just pulling them out of that place of faith. Come on, let's get in the natural a while. Because your confession sad. will pull you <laughs> right out of defeat, right into victory. Yeah. Hold it fast will. to your confession. Of it faith. will. The word in your mouth. In other words, you speak the word in your mouth. So you want to cover some more real quickly? I don't know how much time okay. i got left here. Okay, but if you go to uh, Hebrews 3, 1, mm -hmm. same word confession, same word profession, mm -hmm. and that means we're going to live by faith. What is your confession? All right? Financially, physically, emotionally, the will of God for your life, the, the redemptive realities that Jesus, what is your confession? I mean, if somebody asks you that, you could say, how much time you got? You understand what I mean? If somebody asks you, like, say, you're in this room, somebody says, what's your confession day? You should say, uh, how much time we got? Because I've got several areas I'd like to cover with you. First of all, I'd like to start with the blood of Jesus, that the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin and makes me righteous, the righteousness of God in Christ. And the blood of Jesus is my protection and my covering. And the blood of Jesus stops the deception of the enemy. I have absolute remission, actually molecular remission in my life because of the blood of Jesus. How much time you got now? You want to talk about who you are in Christ? I'm a new creature in Christ. Old things passed away. Everything has become new. So you're, there's 130 of those. So in sound, Christ, you confession. sound like you're a professional. That you you're cannot, holding fast you cannot be profession. an amateur at faith. <laughs> you know these words. Professional at faith. An amateur is somebody who only plays on the weekends. A professional is somebody who can do that every day. A professional is somebody who can make a living at it. Yeah. An amateur needs to keep his regular job. You understand? In other words, no matter what kind of work you do in life, you're a professional at faith. And a real professional always has a coach. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's why you need a pastor. That's why you need somebody to preach the word to you, to swing you right back in, get your thinking lined up, get your mouth moving again. Amen. 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 That's some assembly required. That's right. <laughs> We're coming here, and the Lord says, I'm going to coach you right into victory. <laughs> Amen. No. Thank God. I love it. Last night, we just got coached into victory. Amen. You preached a while, and then people sang, and you know they didn't sing words of, of doubt and unbelief or in situation, you know, I'm under this. No, they just sang the word, and that's a confession. You know, Hebrews uh, 13, 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer unto God continually the sacrifice of praise continually. Yeah. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. That word, giving thanks, is the same word as confession. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, a good Confessing song. Confessing unto his name. A good song yeah. can be a confession of faith. And everyone's doing it together. Yeah, We're rising song. up in our expectation or faith. Yeah. And You're singing, rejoicing. speaking. Yeah. And so Hebrews 13, 15 is a part of <clears throat> the confession scriptures mm -hmm. where it says giving thanks unto his name uh, is actually the same word as profession. Mm -hmm. They've just put giving thanks there. Mm -hmm. But it's the same Greek word as confession or profession. Or with some even translators uh, translated confessing unto his name. Unto his so you say by him or through Christ, by him therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips the giving. fruit of our lips, giving yes. thanks, confessing unto his name. In other words, our confession, our 
thanksgiving Amen. brings us into agreement with everything the Word of God says. Hallelujah. So just while you're giving thanks with your words or through your singing. So what if you're having a bad day? You're feeling bad. Your emotions bad. Things it's are going actually, wrong. It is actually scriptural to have a bad day. Okay. Because in Ephesians 6, Paul said that you will be able to stand in the evil day. There you go. In other words, in every believer's life, there are times when Satan will attack you on the left or on the right, mm -hmm. and he calls that to be able to stand in that bad day. Yeah. How are you going to be able to stand in that bad day? You, you better get your on. shield of faith out. <laughs> you better get the sword of the get spirit the out and here. stand your ground. Yes. Hold fast to your confession. And of that means you're So speaking. most people say, well, you should never have a bad day. Well, Paul apparently had a couple. So, <clears throat> so <laughs> in Ephesians 6, he said there is a time in all of our lives when it seems like the enemy is trying to block this, attacking us here, trying to destroy our lives or the plan of God for our lives or the blessing of God on our lives. So don't act like you never had a bad day. It, and come on, if you're married, got kids, come on, you live very long. If you hadn't had one yet, just live long enough. If you live in your body. <laughs> and it seems like the devil throw everything at you, including the kitchen sink. So, <clears throat> so I'm just saying, in that day, Be hold ready. fast to your confession Be of faith. Ready. Lift Amen. your voice, and that's where the battle will turn, and that's where you stand on the ground, and you win. Hallelujah. And that's why it's so important to just daily uh, rehearse these things, like just like mm -hmm. what you were doing, rehearse. Uh, the truth of the Word of God. Make good confessions. Get your eyes on the Word. Hold fast to your profession before mm -hmm. you get out and get into the battle. Amen. You you keep it refreshed. Well, you know, in your we mind. could like do two months just on this subject. We could. <laughs> because it is so significant and so valuable and so important. Mm -hmm. And so most people think if they get like one sermon on this a year or every couple of years, they're like, okay, I, get, I did a sermon on that. I had a preacher tell me one time, he said, yeah, I did a sermon on that. I wanted to say, praise the Lord, but not head. You need to do about 52 of them. In other words, in other words, this is not a sermon. This is the that faith comes by the repetition, and sometimes we forget to hold fast our confession of faith, or we go silent. And so we need a continual reminder is what are you saying about your situation? Are you agreeing with Jesus? Are you agreeing with God? Are you agreeing with your feelings? Are you agreeing with your circumstances? Because your confession of faith will always Always puts you over because Jesus is victor. Amen. And it's so vital. We're the body of Christ and we need one another because we stir each other up. Mm -hmm. And you know, Hebrews, the 10th chapter says, For, uh, to forget not, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a man of some is, even more when you see Jesus coming. So that's why when we get together, we need to not let our conversation just be, I know, we have fun. We talk about this. We talk about hunting, cars, trucks, all those things. But our conversation, Smith Wigglesworth always was good at, let's see what the Bible says right now. Let's see what the, you know, and stir each other up. Uh, what's God saying to you right now? Did you know about this verse? Let's talk about whatever. Let's talk about Jesus. Magnify. Right. Magnify Jesus. Because when we speak his name, we begin to say his words, confess who he is, mm. praise him. Guess who shows up at the meeting? Jesus shows up yeah. at the meeting. Amen. He says, you call my name? Here I am. So we don't we won't, don't keep talking about everything the devil's doing. Especially. He says, you know, especially you might, the bad you, you're news. not ignorant. You see what's happening in the world. Yeah. You just don't keep talking about what the devil's doing. Turn that thing around and start talking about magnify what Jesus him. is doing. Make what, him big. What, amen. Magnify <laughs> Jesus. Amen. Make him big. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so you have uh, 1 John 5, 4, where it says, This is the victory that overcomes, overcomes. the world, even our faith. faith. And you cannot separate faith from confession. That's right. That's right. The two go together. That's right. This is the victory. 1 Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight of faith. faith. Come on, so there's going to be a fight. Amen? Amen. Amen, because there is a fight to faith. But it's a good fight. It's one that you win, it's but it's still a fight. Win. It's a different kind of fight. Right. That's but why they put the praisers out front <laughs> when they were fighting. Because, <laughs> yeah. man, you get your praisers out front, and you can plan on winning right it's then. Right. Amen. And, and it so, says, take the sword of the Spirit. And the Amplified Bible says this, the uh, 
sword, which is spirit, the word, which is the word of God, the Holy Spirit, he wields that sword. So when so you, the Holy Spirit will basically say, take, say this, say this. Use speak your weapon. That word. Speak the word. Yeah. Whatever and thoughts, whatever feelings are going on in your life, say this. Say the this. Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes He'll even give you a song, mm -hmm. and that's a part of your confession. And I, you know, while I was just thinking about that, I thought you're not just fighting the air. That's right. This isn't an air fight, you know. But you are fighting real enemies with the Word of God. Yeah. yeah. So the devil will attack you with thoughts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And words yeah. and images, pictures but with the word of God in our memories, memories. Every memories. thought that comes, go no. Nope. Take every thought captive. Every time, mm. every feeling. Nope. The word of God says this. So we're always, all the time, speaking God's word. Yeah, this and is overcoming. The yeah. So fight the good fight of faith. It's a good so fight. it's a distraction if you ever get in a people fight, because we are not fighting people. And it's a very distraction when people offend you or hurt you and you get unforgiven. And you're distracted looking at people. No, we don't fight with people. If you're in a people fight, you're wrong fight. Paul said, we don't even wrestle with flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Now, the devil does use people at times. Uh, but I'm saying our primary authority is exercising faith in the blood and telling the devil to stop his maneuvers and stop his operation in the name of Jesus and no matter who he's operating through. That's right. It's really amazing. Amen. When they prayed in the book of Acts, I mean, there's some amazing stuff in the book of Acts under grace. Yeah. Under grace. When they prayed in the it book of some Acts, judgment that it happened. says one of the kings, you know, and he was persecuting the Christians, mm -hmm. stuff, and the kings, he's giving a speech and acting like he's the boss, and it said an angel came down and killed him, and worms ate him. Well, that don't sound like an attractive thing. But this guy's king. He's persecuting Christians, and he's acting like he's God, and he's acting like he's the supreme authority here. And it said and because the church had prayed, judgment came down, and that king was removed. And in America, those in authority in America that resist the church will be removed. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. And they'll either be removed or they will die. Including the Supreme Court and including our government. Because when we pray, oh, there's some power available when we pray. Amen. To, to uh, remove hindrances and people that refuse. God will give people mercy for a long time. But if they continue to resist the church and try to stop the gospel, then they'll be removed. If we'll pray. If we pray. So we have to have a continued, heartfelt, persistent, tremendous power available prayer. And we <laughs> have authority in Don't the name. Don't give up. Yes. And by the power of the Holy Ghost and by praying in the Spirit, your spirit joins together with the Holy Spirit for the will of God and for the gospel to, to prevail. Amen. Paul saw that happen so many times. Things would turn around through prayer. Yeah. In the book of Acts, when Peter was in jail, remember... They prayed. The church prayed. The angels showed up, let Peter out. Peter came out. Wow, <laughs> revival happened. Yeah. So prayer in the church releases that authority, takes hold of the power of God mm. and uh, connects it to the situation that you're in. Amen. Things will Amen. change. Amen. So yes. your confession of faith, hold fast, don't turn loose of it. Jesus is Lord. The blood of Jesus, Christ has redeemed you. In other words, there's a whole category of your confession. Hold fast to that. Don't turn loose of it. Be bold and agree with God. Amen? Amen. And so our free gift to you is the Spirit of Faith book. All you have to do is go to markhankins.org, and we'll send you one free. It's our gift to you and to our partners. If you're not a partner with a ministry, then you just say, I'd sure like to give so that this ministry can grow and multiply and the Word can go to people all over the world. And we've had some in this meeting from Ethiopia. You're watching right now some right. pastors and ministers. We went to Ethiopia and took about $50,000 worth of books and uh, teaching on faith and the authority of the believer the word and had working. tremendous meetings. God bless Ethiopia. But you can see we've done that in many, many nations. Mm -hmm. And so your partnership with us enables us to keep preaching the word and the word grows and multiplies and yes. prevails. So yeah. go to the website and there's free 
unlimited digital downloading. All the messages there are yours free. You can download them on your phone. And so get the book on the spirit of faith. Jesus is Lord. And I'm telling you, the word works mightily and God's given you authority and mountains have to move and you're a giant killing believer. Amen. Amen. And you got your mouth open. You're Amen. praising God. Hallelujah. And so until tomorrow morning, Jesus is Lord. God richly bless you. Hold fast to your confession of